Hi everyone, in this video I will be reviewing PM786 True RMS Digital Multimeter from Bryman and it's EV Block branded. Uh, I bought it from uh, EV Block store for 215 Australian dollars quite recently. That list price excludes the tax and the shipping as well. So in my case, it cost me like 250, 246 Australian dollars with shipping and tax. And I'm in the same state uh, with Dave, so I imagine that's the cheapest shipping possible. Uh, if you order from Australia, uh, it also comes with batteries, three AAA batteries that the device needs. But it's noted in the page that for international orders, uh, they won't be um, including the batteries for you know safety reasons and rules. Um, so there was no problem with the order at all. Uh, I ordered and received the multimeter within three or four days, and that was the cheapest shipping option. So I had got I got the emails about the order status and shipping status and everything was uh, uh, no problems with shipping at all. And also the multimeter doesn't come with a, any manual or any documents. You just need to hop onto the EV Block store site and you can just download the documentation from here. Okay, so the multimeter comes with a couple of things. Uh, it comes with probes. And um, yeah, these are the probes. Uh, they are like real high quality and uh, gold plated, um, real sharp. And um, it can also have, it also comes with those uh, banana adapters on the probes. They come screwed. Um, they're also gold plated and real handy. Um, one problem that I had with the common probe is once they, they were screwed once they arrived but um i could not remove the banana adapter from the uh, probe because if you don't need it yeah it's just a bit of a hassle uh, i had to really squeeze it hard because it was spinning on its own axis so i had to just um squeeze it with some pliers and go real medieval to be able to remove that and uh, later on i also realized there's some I don't know whether you can see it on the camera, it's a little bit hard to focus. But there's like a bit of plastic, some sort of manufacturing error here really. Bit of silicone mold remaining on the screw, so probably that's why. Um, it wasn't easy to remove the screw without um, damaging the probe. Luckily in my case I didn't, but it gave me a bit of headaches. But aside from that, these, these are not cheap plastic, they're really flexible cords. Uh, long enough, no problems whatsoever, gold plated, real sharp probes, so real good probes. Aside from that, you have those insulation caps, which you can just pop onto the probes to reduce the exposure of the contacts. They are rated for one kilovolts as well. And we also get a K-type thermocouple, and it's marked, so it just, uh, this goes into the red socket and the other goes to the common socket. The only problem with this thermocouple is that I was looking for some specs on it. So in the documentation, there are some specs about what the device can do, what the multimeter can do with the thermocouple, but you don't have any specs on the thermocouple itself. So you don't know the temperature ranges, like it's it's hard to tell. Maybe it's such, such a common thing that everybody knows about it, but yeah, I was looking for some sort of specs about the included thermocouple, which doesn't seem to exist. And looking at the multimeter, it's very strong, very solid case. Um, the touch buttons has a really nice tactile feeling to them. Um, and the knob has no problems whatsoever. It is a CDC voltage measurements in the volts and millivolts level. Um, it also has electrical field detection. It's, uh, you can change the sensitivity, high, low, you can use the probes. Or there's like an antenna and the top right of the multimeter, you can just for to detect live wires and stuff like that. Um, we have the frequency and the duty um, measurement for pulse width modulated signals, the resistance and continuity and NS functions as well. 
and you have like the diode um, and capacitance measurement, temperature measurement, and current measurement. Okay, so the screen is five digits and it's really brilliant. You can just, there's a nice backlight to it. I'm just going to pop something over here so you can see it clearly. Um, no readability issues, really big digits. The device itself is also quite big if you're planning to use it on your bench. Uh, and if you're like, uh, if you don't have a lot of space, which I don't, um, it, it's quite difficult to place it somewhere really. It's, it's a big one, um, but it makes up for it because it's quite strong and it's, um, the user interface is very good. Um, and it's, it's a nice build quality to it. The screen is very readable. On the back of the, just turn it off. On the back of the device, just gonna remove the probes. We have the battery compartment and the support on the back. Also, it has like slots for the probes. You can just uh, pop the probes in here. That's nice. It will hold them nicely. It's easy to pop them in and also quite easy to pop them up. It it's, holds them firm and nice. So um, it works with three AAA batteries, single the battery compartment. So the battery compartment comes out completely and you have your three batteries here. Um, because I was ordering from Australia, uh, it was shipped with batteries um, in international orders because of DHL rules. They don't have the batteries, they don't allow the batteries, so you have to buy it, but it's really nothing special about them. I like AAA batteries because they are common everywhere. You have all sorts of other devices. So um, that's good, but yeah, that's um, that's the battery compartment pretty much it. Uh, the screws stay on the battery compartment, so that's good design. They're not, you're not gonna lose them. That's pretty good. And on the back of it, there's really not much going on. Just uh, nice brass inserts for the screws. So yeah, this thing is built to last. That's that's definitely the case here. Uh, you have a tiny sort of connector here, I imagine for firmware updates and calibration, but um, there's nothing on the documentation or there's like, doesn't, it's not user accessible. There might be ways to hack it just to provide some sort of connectivity or firmware updates, but uh, there's nothing obvious about it. Um, to be honest, at this price range, I was expecting some sort of connectivity, some USB connectivity, some network connectivity, but um, the rest of the multimeter its build quality and um, like accuracy compensates for the lack of any connection for me, really. But if you are looking for some multimeter with some connection options, yeah, it just doesn't seem to have it out of the box. Okay, let's pop this back in. It's also the fuses like are inside. You have to remove the entire all the screws um, to reach the fuses. It's okay, but um, it would be nice if the fuses were more accessible without tearing down the whole multimeter. Okay, looks good. Um, we have like this um, back thing over here, which is a little bit flimsy, uh, but not so much. I don't see anything happening to it really. Just looking at the rest of the device, it's um, it's very solid, like this thing can definitely take a beating. Um, the screen has a nice thick plexiglass sort of protector, so you can't really push into that screen, it's, it's really neat. Um, and um, push buttons has a nice tactile feeling to it. They're really good quality, nothing feels cheap on this one. Um, we have like four terminals here for the current measurements, the common terminal and for the other measurements. Let's move it over. Um, yeah, put our pop our pros back in. It's, just, it's such a big multimeter, which is normal for it's this this size, but I can't put it in the camera. All right, let me turn it on. I have some test components over here. Let me get rid of these other stuff. Okay, so let's turn on the screen light too. Quite nice. There's a bit of glare on the camera, but it's close now. Get rid of the thermocouple and let's do some 
resistance measurement. I have like a one ohm five watt giant resistor here. Let's have a look at it. It's going on. Yeah, it auto ranges. Uh, can do a better job of contacting. Yep, there you go. It's well within spec. One ohms and um, get a one mega ohm now. So it's quite fast, like um, in especially in the resistance front. The measurements are quite fast. Yeah, that's one mega ohms. It's not very clear on the camera, maybe, but you can see the unit over there. It says one mega ohms, and it's in auto mode. We can change the range as well. So yeah, we have a hundred k over here. A hundred k resistor. Let's measure that. Come on. Okay, I'm just going to squeeze it there. That yeah, yeah. It's a hundred k. It's a bit of a screen. I'm just. Going to try to, yeah, it's hard to see with the light, but um, yeah, you can see the units down there too. And let's do a bit of continuity testing. You can just change the function using the select button, and it's real fast. Uh, the bar, there's also a bar here for let's let's, let's do some voltage measurements and we'll see the bar as well. I'm going to pop this back in so it's, it looks better on the camera. Yeah, just a bit of a problem if this one's on the camera, but yeah, the screen is very readable. There's nothing to complain there. And um, we can do some voltage measurements. I have a signal generator here. I'm just going to generate some different signals and see what's going to happen. Right, we have these probes connected. There we go. Yep. And I'm um, just going to put it into the yeah duty cycle and frequency measurement mode. Let me turn on the frequency generator and see what we can do with it. Okay, so I have a 5 hertz signal there already, which is just showing it 5.010. Let's, let's pump it up to 50 kilohertz. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's actually very accurate. Uh, let's put it to 250 kilohertz. That's as far as my signal generator can go. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now let's put it back to 500. And we can change it to measure the duty cycle, which is at 50% right now. I'm going to put it at 60. Yeah, it's pretty close. 70. Very close. 80. Yeah, so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's pretty good in uh, measuring the um, duty cycle and the frequency of PWM signals. Yeah, that's um, all the measurements look pretty good. I haven't tested all the functions extensively, but um, looking at the specs, it's pretty impressive for uh, the price that you're paying for it. And um, well, I couldn't obviously find any any faults, any any problems with it. Um, it's generally a real good multimeter. And it's it's um price range it's it's priced well as well so um if you are a beginner uh, but you want to seriously get into the hobby that's um that's and and if you're not quite sure what to get how what kind of specs to expect um this is a pretty good multimeter um if you are a beginner and you're looking for something cheaper you can definitely go a little bit cheaper than this because this multimeter has um really nice build quality touches to it. Um, it's not going to give you any headaches at all. Um, it's great for general purpose, electrical work, um, electronic work, it's, um, uh, but it's, it's pretty general purpose. So if you want to, let's say, measure the inductance, or if you want to really accurately measure, um, some components, depending on the kind of work that you are doing, you might go a little bit more expensive than that, like just looking for that particular spec or, um, if you just want to start the hobby, but uh, 250 Australian dollars is too much for you, you can probably go a little bit cheaper than this. But it's a general purpose, really good multimeter, mid range, and um, nothing wrong with it. Um, but um, yeah, you can go like, depending on your budget and your expectations, you can go a little bit more expensive, a little bit more cheaper. It's, it's a mid range device. Um, if you are just beginning into a hobby, the only takeaway you can, like the one takeaway you should you should get from here is that don't go for the absolute like dirt cheap dollar store multimeters because because you are building stuff, you're just learning the ropes. Um, 
such a multimeter, they usually work. There's like nothing obviously wrong with them. But once they don't, uh, you won't be able to differentiate whether it's your device not working or whether it's your multimeter. So it's going to cause a lot of trouble for you. So it's better to go for the mid-range ones if you are serious into the hobby. And obviously, if you are doing professional field work, that's a great multimeter for general purpose repairs and everything. That's that's very good. Uh, it definitely can take a beating. That's like the UI, the user interface is pretty good. Uh, it's a very solid device as well. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about this particular multimeter or how it's used or what kind of problems it has. Also, I was hoping for some sort of connectivity. It's price range, but doesn't exist. But again, like everything else on the device, all the the build quality, the general build quality accuracy compensates for the lack of um, any straightforward connectivity options. So yeah, um, thanks for watching. See you next time.